Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Fixer Med. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to connect your 8-BitDo microcontroller to the Windows version of Anki using the Kant Anki controller mapping software. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. Go ahead and go to the Anki web page for Kant Anki, which I'll have linked in the description. You can go ahead and copy the add-on code number from the end of the web address or scroll down copy it from the download section. Just hit control C here. Then open up your Anki, hit tools, add-ons, get add-ons, and copy the code in and hit okay. I'm not gonna be hitting okay since my computer is really slow and I had to pre-install the software, but once you guys hit okay, it's gonna say add-on has been installed. Go ahead and restart Anki. So you just close Anki out. And yeah, next you're gonna want to connect your 8-bit dough microcontroller to your Bluetooth settings. So go ahead and hit search here, type in Bluetooth. Open up Bluetooth settings, they show up. Make sure your Anki controller is on the D configuration of the SD and K settings. Ensure that you know the location of the sync and home button. The home button is next to the star button. On The home button is on the right, the star button is on the left. The sync button is next to the SD and K trigger. So hit add device, Bluetooth, hold down both of the buttons so the controller can be detected. It's detected, let it connect. It is connected, your device is ready to go. Fantastic. Go ahead and close out your Bluetooth settings. Go to Anki, click some buttons and then you should see this pop-up 8-bit though micro connected. Now you know that it's connected to your Anki system as well. So hit Kant Anki, wait for the settings to pop up and go ahead and map it to your heart's content. On the uh, other tutorial, I showed a cool way of using the G and comma buttons on the 8-bit though micro. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it simple. If you guys wanna cross-reference both tutorials, feel free to do so. It's not a big deal. B is, I like having B set to good. And then I like having Y set to again. A is hard. X is easy. L as redo, undo for L. Redo for L, sorry. R is undo. Kind of hard to think while well, mapping this thing out. L2, R2, all of these other buttons you can map to whatever you want basically i just like keeping the answer and question cards pretty similar for these i just like saying all the flip card because sometimes i might forget view enter enter Easy, hard, or this is hard, and again. So you can map it however you want, but once you're done mapping it out to your heart's content, go ahead and click save. Close that out, open up your deck. Set up your view. So you can see I'm not hitting the keyboard or anything. I am just hitting the buttons. 
This time if I want it hard, you can see it registers that I had it reviewed again. It's red instead of green. And I'm very happy. And if I don't like my mapping, I can change it. Uh, mapping is a very personal choice that most people make while utilizing the controller. So play around with the settings, see what works best for you. And if you want to know how to custom mapping works, go ahead and consult the other tutorial where I go into great detail about how the custom buttons work. Because I like having G and comma set to my L2 and R2 buttons. And yeah, guys, that will do it all for this tutorial. Believe it or not, it took a long time to get this tutorial out since I had so many takes since the computer was so slow. So I'm actually happy that we got through this take. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to write them in the comment section below. If not, this is Fixer Med signing off. Good luck, guys. Good luck studying, and goodbye.